So, <clears throat> the solitary selves, having been cast into this world uh, of self and other, um, <clears throat> its first realization in its process of self-realizing is Gedula, a likeness. How similar we all are. It's self and other, but we're all alike, basically. Okay? The <clears throat> solitary self casts the light of itself into Gedula, that proud, here I am, uh, here I am, uh, but uh, there's togetherness here too. That's the first realization here. This first sequencing of individual selves based on their similarity, that's Gajula. The next realization is that, well, I am unique. I am not only alike, but I'm also different. And so we go from alikeness to difference, and it's a continuum here. From alikeness, Gedula, to difference, Gebura. It's all one thing, I, self, and the other, but it's looking at it differently, experiencing that dichotomy differently, okay? So in Gebura, instead of sequence by a likeness, it's sequenced by difference, or more, uh, more appropriately, by uniqueness. In Gebura, the individual self, the solitary self, realizes that it is utterly unique. It is the only one that is composed of this specific set of essential meanings in this specific ratio the only one, the only manifestation of that in the entire cosmos, okay? That is the solitary self. It's all alone in its uniqueness. But, well, so that uniqueness is there for a reason. The, as the I, the one self, self-realizes, it must realize every little bit of itself. And to do that, there must be an infinite number of individual selves to express the fullness of the essential meaning of the I, okay? And every one of them is necessary in order to achieve that fullness of self-expression for the I, okay? So, there is great power in the individual's uniqueness. It is a fundamental component of the universe. An essential component of the universe. It is that important. And, simultaneously, that unimportant, because everything else is exactly the same. Everything, everything, has its own power, its own part to play in the universe. And that's what Gebura is about, okay? It establishes that unique 
individuality. It cuts away <clears throat> everything else. Severe severity. You know, we're here in the pillar of severity. <clears throat> the pillar of form. And here the individual begins to take a, a solid, recognizable, distinct form. But the real magic here is that you can't have Gebura without Gejula. And likewise, you can't have Gejula without Gebura. It takes both. The power of each individual within Gebura only exists in the context of the collective. It only exists in the context of the collective. Without that collective context, that individual power becomes a destructive thing. <clears throat> this is the big mistake that human beings made along the way in losing conscious contact with the human collective awareness because in that context our human powers are constructive things but in absence of that collective we have become destructive with all of our powers <laughs> Okay? <clears throat> but, <clears throat> in the real world, <clears throat> our powers that we each possess becomes a productive, creative force in the context of the collective awareness. It, with the realization that we are all connected, we are all alike. In that context, our powers make sense and become positive things. Okay, that's the lesson of Gedula and Gebura. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, this establishes sequence. Remember, a while back, I spoke about the three components of time-space, which is what we're aiming for here. That f full self-expression of the I occurs in the present moment of time-space. <clears throat> so, the three components are change, which was the path of Shin. Sequence, which is this realm here, this <clears throat> dichotomy between Gedjula and Gebura, this establishes sequence, and the next will be duration. Okay. So, here we have sequence, and we have <clears throat> subjective meaning, okay? The <clears throat> supernal realm, we have essential meaning and essential form. In the mental realm of the <clears throat> solitary self, we have subjective meaning. Okay? And subjective form. <clears throat> I am that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the paths, the connections that create, if you will, um, Gebura, <clears throat> first of all, is the connection, the hidden path between Kether, Crown, the I, 
and give you a severity fear. <clears throat> As with the hidden path connecting with Gedula, this hidden path acts as a direct blessing from the eye, a direct input of self-awareness from the eye, stressing you know, the unique nature of each individual that all together we represent the whole of the essential meaning of the I. Okay? So the, the whole I comes down to bless Gebura. Now the I does this for every one of the side pillar sephirot. Okay? The middle pillar sephirot, the only one that has a direct input from Kether, is Tiferet the sentient self, or the solitary self. <clears throat> so the eye reaches down and illuminates this, <clears throat> the unique nature, the necessity of every single one of those little reflections of the, the eye. Okay? The second path <clears throat> comes from Bina. This is the path of Mars, from Bina into Gebura. And here, the unique nature of the specific <clears throat> solitary self flows from the greater self in Bina directly into each solitary self in Gibura, reinforcing its uniqueness. This is like the, a strong imprint of uniqueness into the um, <clears throat> solitary self in Gibura. And that's Mars, okay? The next path into Gebura comes from Tiferet. And this is the path of Virgo, who is ruled by Mercury. Now this is an earth sign, and it mirrors the upper earth sign of Vav, which led from Kether into Bina, a central form. So, <clears throat> This emanation from Tiferet into Gebura. This is the pristine essence of the solitary self impressing itself into Gebura, the unique aspect of the sentient self, or the solitary self, the individual self. And uh, there is a purity to this expression. And it really shapes the individuality, giving it really its final mental form. Okay? The mental body in Gabura is fully formed, fully recognizable as a unique individual mental body. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the final path is the mother, mother letter Aleph for air. <clears throat> now, the air mediates. The, this is the exact center of the tree of life, the Gra tree of life, is this 
path of Aleph. And it is the continuum between alikeness and uniqueness. It is the complete continuum. That, that force that connects the two together. Okay? And there is a, a strong passage in one specific direction. From Getula to Gevira. From loving kindness to severity. Now, <clears throat> It's called severity for, well, because the individual self is ridding itself of everything about it that is like other, basically. What it's doing is it's focusing on its uniqueness and sort of shedding awareness of this connection to everything. <clears throat> that connection is just the... <clears throat> it is hard to put into words, excuse me. Um, in the context of that connectedness of everything, it experiences its own uniqueness and focuses on its own uniqueness to realize its own unique power, okay? So that's the severity. It's cutting away, you know, what is not itself. So what is here in Gebura is the crystalline, pure, <clears throat> solitary self. And that's true of all solitary selves at this stage in self-realization, okay? Now it's called fear for a very interesting reason, and that's because the, it's very human reason, because when a human being, when a human uh, solitary self fully realizes its own unique power, in its own unique place, the value of its own unique place in the universe, <sighs> the powers that be tremble <laughs> in fear because that's the one thing that they cannot uh, supersede. That power of the individual self in the context of the collective is insurmountable. And the powers that be, <laughs> um, and everybody knows what I mean by that phrase. Um, <clears throat> want to control the general population in order to maintain society. I mean, that is the nature, the basic function of society is to control people to keep their uh, actions within certain parameters so that society can sustain itself. You know, especially a capitalistic society has to do that in order to survive, okay? That's just the nature of the beast. So, <clears throat> the alternative to that is a collective of powerful human beings, okay? But it's has to be a collective, and that's the real hurdle we always face in trying to change the world, because it takes all of us working collectively in order to, you know, influence things on that scale. Anyway, so <clears throat> the path of Aleph is that continuum 
between a likeness and difference. From Gedula, it stretches out in just infinite increments to the exact, you know, everything is exactly unlike me. And from Gebura, it stretches out an infinite number of increments to where all of our differences fade away and we become alike. Okay? That is the dynamic here. But it's, again, all connected. <clears throat> and this is the essence of sequence. <clears throat> So next time, we will talk about Yesa, okay, and the, uh, the, uh, the five paths that feed into Nexa, into Yesa. Okay, so till next time, bye-bye.